Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers in mission focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. Welcome back to another episode of the Interlake Sports Now. Today is going to be a jam-packed show. We have Whitefish baseball coach Kyler Blades joining the program. And then after that, we're going to have the Daily Interlake's very own Fritz Neighbor jumping on to talk a little bit about the Grizz spring football game last week, pro day, some of the Grizzlies on their way to the next level. A lot of fun on today's show. Thanks again to Coach Blaze for taking the time. Thanks again to Fritz, as always. All right, let's jump in to that interview with Coach Blaze, and then we'll get to the good stuff with Fritz. So, yeah, if you want to just start out by kind of telling our audience and just myself a little bit about your baseball background. I know you run a little baseball academy in town. You've done some coaching, played at the college level, did a little research. So just kind of wanted to give you yeah. the chance to tell about yourself a little, and then we'll dive into the squad. Yeah, so I was born and raised in, in Whitefish. I played for the Glacier Twins, back when they were a double-A program, I played on the double-A for three years. Ended up playing some ball in college, mostly at Wenatchee Valley College in Washington, and then finished up at Pacific Lutheran University, just south of Tacoma, Washington. Uh, it was a D3 program, and you know, we were top uh, 10 ranked at one point in the country, and uh, I ended up having the honor of being a captain on that team my, my senior year, mostly playing shortstop. Uh, a little bit of outfield, but came back to the Valley in 2016, coached the Calico Lakers AA program, and started my own academy. Kind of went off from there, uh, opened up a physical space where I do a lot of baseball lessons and um, strength training, but when high school baseball was approved, I really just jumped at the opportunity and was lucky enough to get the job. Yeah, and what a great – it sounds like obviously you have a strong background in the game, a lot of passion for the game, and what an opportunity to grow the game in the state. And this is – so, yeah, perfect man for the job. Congrats on the position, and I think uh, Whitefish made the right decision. It's a great – Great opportunity to grow the sport. And um, before uh, one other question, I guess, and then we'll kind of jump into the squad itself. I did want to ask, given the high school baseball coming to the state and it kind of, you know, Legion ball has been strong here, but having that extra layer of support system with the high school coaching, do you think it will ultimately help recruiting moving forward in the state? I did want to ask you, I guess we'll jump into that first and then go into all the fun stuff with your squad. I didn't want to drift too far away from the team this year, but I did want to ask you that having played some college ball and knowing that, Having that much more of a sports system behind you like yourself and a coaching staff at the high school level can only help. So, Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of the whole point uh, to grow the game. That's what high school baseball being approved really means. Um, so many more kids are going to have the opportunity to play. You know, these, these, you know, not that they're huge barriers put up by Legion Ball, but um, you know, committing to a full summer and it costing a, a significant amount of money. Um, you know, those, those barriers can be eliminated with the addition of high school baseball. So with more kids playing, um, athletes finding out, hey, I, I'm actually good at this game, or hey, I really love this sport, that's only going to end up getting more kids opportunities at the collegiate level. It's not going to happen at the snap of a finger, but that's my ultimate goal is to send more kids to college because I've, I've experienced that and I know how valuable uh, it is it has been to me and how valuable it can be to these young men. Yeah, definitely. Well said. And and then just kind of the structure behind it, I just know, you know, how it goes playing sports. You get a certain group of kids. They grow up playing together, playing one sport. Maybe it'd be basketball, football. Now it's like, hey, we're getting to high school. Let's keep it rolling with the baseball. So it's just another avenue for kids to keep playing the game. Totally right. Grow the game. Um, so now to dive into your team a little bit, I just wanted to kind of give you the opportunity, kind of break down the squad a little, give us, give the audience, the local, the listeners here in the Valley, an idea of the Whitefish baseball squad. Just kind of, if you wanted to start with your pitching and then kind of go from there, move into the rest of the team. For sure. We're a, a strong senior class, whether it be kids that have, you know, college aspirations or players that haven't played for a few years. We have such a strong senior class, you know, led by, um, Ty Swagger, who's committed to pitch at Washington State next year. 
uh, his battery mate, the catcher Finn Ridgeway. You know, he could he could have played college baseball for sure, but he is going to pursue playing quarterback, which is awesome. Uh, we also have, you know, Jacob Columbus is committed to Yakima Valley Community College. Jake McIntyre, our center fielder, is um, looking for a home next year, but he's definitely a collegiate-level uh, player. And then Maddox Muller is playing shortstop for us. He's just as smooth as they get out there at short. He's played for the Glacier Twins, um, and he's going to be a real staple for us. Yeah, no, it sounds like you guys got a solid core there. I, I was familiar that Sh uh, Ty Schwager was a Washington State commit. I did want to ask a little bit as far as having that kind of a guy stepping on the mound from day one, does that kind of instill confidence in the squad around? I just, you know, knowing guys playing baseball growing up a little bit, playing myself just a little bit, but knowing when you got that dude on the mound, it kind of puts the confidence around the squad and just kind of wanted to ask you about that. Yeah, I mean, we have all the reason to be confident whether it be Ty on the mound, Jacob on the mound, uh, you know, Josiah, Ruther is a, is a lefty for us, first baseman, but he's got some good stuff on the mound too. Um, and, 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 you know, baseball is a game that we can't win with one guy. Yep, yep. It certainly helps having a dominant pitcher, but, um, you know, our, our focus is making sure guys are putting forth the effort, being energetic, and staying active even if Ty is going three up, three down with three strikeouts an inning you know so we got to make sure our guys are are engaged have enthusiasm um you know when guys are, are playing well or when when pitchers might be struggling you know then we can rely on each other that way yeah no gotta stay locked in i will say you just mentioned how, uh, finn ridgeway i watched him quite a bit as a quarterback great leader i was gonna say it translates perfectly to catcher they always say catcher a little bit like the quarterback on the field so you will you know that's got to feel good knowing he'll uh, be there to keep those dudes locked in and you know he has that experience so that's got to be feel good and just um from there i did just kind of want to say um thank you again for your time if there's anything else you want to throw out there but just kind of your goals for the you know, inaugural season of baseball in Montana and just kind of your thoughts on where your squad could end up year number one, just kind of, in, and again, thank you so much for your time. It's been great. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah. We, we have some, uh, some high aspirations, but our focus and mantra this year is taking things one pitch at a time. Yeah. You know, we got to qualify first for the state tournament and then take it one game at a time. At that point, we don't really know what's out there. Uh, and we're going to, you know, attack every opponent just like they're going to attack us with their best shot. And so, um, you know, we're taking it in stride and, and having a blast with this inaugural season of, of baseball. No, that, that couldn't have said any better. Kyler loved that. I like to make the comparison often boxing to other sports. You, you know, you got to throw a couple jabs to set up the big one. So, no, you got to take it one pitch at a time. Great, great, well said. And thank you so much for your time today. That uh, helped me. I'm ready for baseball. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if there's anything else uh, you want to throw out there, feel free. If not, like, like I said, thank you. Yeah, give us some sunshine. No more praying for snow. Let's get the sun out. There we go. I'm I'm right on board with you. I'm ready for it. Let's <laughs> let's let's get to those fields green and get let the kids play some ball. Heck yeah, great yes, stuff, sir. Kyler. Yes, and you have a great day. And uh, it's gonna be fun to watch this here. Best of luck out there. Have fun. Thank you. Yeah, have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Okay. All right, that was head coach of the Whitefish Bulldogs, Kyler Blades, the first ever. Head coach of the Whitefish Bulldogs baseball team. Fun stuff. Great stuff from Kyler there. feel like I'm ready for baseball to get underway. We had a little cancellation this week with the weather. It's just been just a little bit of a holdup, but we're almost there. Can finish the year strong for sure. End of April, early May. There's going to be some great baseball being played here in the Valley, Northwest Montana, and the state in general. So the Bulldogs going to be a team to watch for sure. We're going to dive into some more of our local squads soon enough, get to them. But thanks again to Coach Kyler Blades for taking the time to join us. Awesome stuff. Like I said, that got me ready for baseball. I hope now after listening, you are all ready for baseball as well. Thanks again to everybody for checking it out. More to come soon. All right. Great stuff from Coach Blades. Best of luck to Whitefish Baseball. We're going to have an interview coming up soon with Columbia Falls Wildcats Coach Bill Sape as well. So that'll be fun. Really trying to get into the baseball flow in the first ever year of high school baseball in Montana. Now, let's get into that interview with the one and only Fritz Neighbor of the Daily Interlake. Talk a little Grizz football, and we'll wrap this bad boy up. All right. Big thank you to the Daily Interlake's own Fritz Neighbor for taking the time to talk some Grizz football today. Fritz was down in Missoula. He was at the spring game, and then pro day was going on. So a lot of Grizz action this past week. So just kind of wanted to jump right into it, Fritz. Starting out the spring game, 
I saw transfer QB Sam Vidlack making a ton of waves on Twitter. Saw some Grizz fans even saying, we got our guy. Kind of I'm like, it's the spring game. We'll see how it goes. But that being said, strong spring day performance from Vidlack. Your initial thoughts on the Boise State transfer? Yeah, he looked pretty good. He threw a nice ball. Um, uh, made some big plays. Some of those big plays came when he had all day back there, which maybe is an indictment of anything. Um, the Grizz have every old starting old lineman back, not that they all played. But, yeah, he threw a nice ball. Um, you know, he originally committed to the Grizz and then decided he could uh, try it at Oregon State and then try to try to the next year at Boise State. Now he's back with the Grizz. And uh, looks like he can play at this level just fine. And, and they they have a little bit of a hole. Chris Brown performed uh, admirably at times, especially the longer he was on the field on Friday night. But I think Vedlak made a statement. He looked he looked pretty good back there, and and part of it I think was uh, the offense is a little uh, more unfettered. Um, I sat up there with Coulter Noanes of Skyline Sports, and we both remarked that we saw a tunnel screen that went inside and outside bubble, uh, something we didn't see very much, and something you generally don't see um, in Bobby Hawk's button down screen games. So, all in all, pretty encouraging day for to watch the offense run. Yeah, strong quarterback play, and then, like you said, some new wrinkles in the offense. I think that was a big question mark. Also, a lot of people had. I'm glad you mentioned that. New offensive coordinator, a lot of changes there. So, yeah, it's going to be fun to see what sprinkles they have on offense. Kind of touch on the offense a little bit. If there's obviously anything else you want to mention surrounding the O, go for it. But I did want to ask you a little bit. The Grizz, they lost a lot of major pieces on defense. You had Patrick O'Connell, Justin Ford, Robbie Howe, just to name a few. They're onto the life after college football. Three guys who had a major impact on this program. Did any guys step up? And like I said, it's the spring game. It's early. But did anybody in particular jump out as some dudes who will fill those shoes this fall? Because they're going to be some big shoes to be filled. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We saw some, some youngsters and some newcomers make uh, pretty good showings. Tyson Rostad, who's a Richard freshman, safety, um, showed out. Um, Cooper Barnum, the Washington State transfer, he looked good back there. It was Ronald Jackson, another safety, who transferred in from Akron. Bobby mentioned that he felt like all the transfers showed that they belonged here at this level in Missoula. Um, Dylan Simmons looked good at corner. He's a kind of a newcomer. He was recruited here, but uh, which is rare enough in these days of the transfer portal. And then, you know, a guy that really stuck out, two guys stuck out, Gino Leonard, who is the grandson of uh, um, uh, kind of a Grizz legend, Gene Leonard. And, uh, you know, you wonder about legacy. Some, some are better than others, but he looked really good. He had the big sack, horse fumble, and then recovered it on Friday. And another guy is a UCLA tran- uh, graduate transfer, Hayden Harris. He looked really good on the D-line. A lot of the guys on the D-line that you expect to see uh, didn't play, you know, there was no uh, Alex Gubner, there was no Kale Edwards. Um, a lot of the veterans didn't really have to be there, so it was time for those young guys and newcomers to show up, and uh, and they did, and that, that included Henry News. He got in there and made some plays at times. Yeah, that's encouraging to see for Grizz Nation and the coaching staff, everyone. That's what you want, a bunch of newcomers coming in hungry, whether it's the young guys who are just getting their first crack at it or the transfers, and Speaking of Henry Noose, I did want to mention the Glacier product. He's another name I saw pop up on Twitter, making an impact. Um, thoughts on kind of the game Noose had and his potential role with the Grizz and just kind of some other Northwest Montana kids who have an opportunity to make an impact this season or down the road. You know, there's not too many uh, Northwest kids on there. Uh, Drew Deck didn't suit up. He, uh, he played last year with a torn labrum, and mm-hmm. so he had to get that fixed. So he, um, he'll be ready to go in fall camp. That's the receiver out of Glacier. Um, Noose is, you know, he's a youngster and uh, I don't think or I don't think Bobby thinks, Bobby Hawk thinks that he's reached his full potential um, you know, he had 12 stops as freshman, he had a couple dozen stops last year so he's on he's on the right arc he's, things are moving up for him and uh, I think he's definitely in the mix, you know, they rotate in eight, off, eight defensive linemen during the game, so he's going to get a lot of playing time, a lot of chance to make plays and and, and hopefully he makes them. And um, other than that, I think there's one white fish old lineman, but uh, we didn't see a whole lot of him, uh, Dylan Botner. And uh, other than that, there's just not a whole lot of Northwest Montana talent. Oh, I, I, 
I should mention Garrett Graves, who also played early and then stepped in the sideline, the mm-hmm. kid out of Eureka. He's, fin- he's finally seen her. seems like he's been there forever. And uh, he made a stop early, and then, you know, they let those other young safeties get in there and play. Yeah, no, and that sounds about right. And you, and just to throw it out there, it is interesting. Another Glacier product, Patrick Rohrbach, he's on to life after football as well with his journey to the Air Force, I believe. So that's an interesting, another Glacier product there. But, yeah, no, great stuff, Ritz. If there's any other major takeaways from the spring game, just kind of want to give you the opportunity to mention them and then just kind of roll into the pro day, talk just a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I just think uh, it was pretty relaxed, I think. Bobby Hawk mentioned more than once that it's the easiest day of spring drills is their their, their end of drill spring scrimmage. So, you know, they, they had a lot of contact. They knocked the quarterbacks around a little bit. And uh, now it's time to get strong again for fall camp. Yeah, and it just seems like the year flies by. Next thing you know, we'll be getting ready for fall camp, gearing up for opening week of football so next thing you know so no it is just a little taste of football in spring but gotta love it speaking of pro day i I saw a lot of coverage on twitter a lot of guys from montana making noise just any um big takeaways from pro day for you or any players who really could have seen their stock rise after a solid solid outing in missoula excuse me oh i think uh you know our guy patty o'connell looked pretty good on tuesday he was a little hard to recognize his beard's bigger than ever (laughs) But, uh, you know, he did – I think he he broad jumped 10-2. He said he hadn't done that in a really long time, if at all. His vertical was amazing. His 40 time could have been better, but, you know, he's running on a slick field. But on that same field, he ran a really amazing cone drill. So um, he wasn't really surprised. We just knew he was a pretty good deal and he showed some explosiveness. They made him run some some pass coverage, which he didn't get to do much in college. And I, I think he fared well. I, th- I think he'll get drafted. Um, I was a little surprised. I shouldn't be. That uh, Malik Flowers ran such a good time. I think it was four four six or four four seven. Um, it's not foot speed. He just a, he must have really good strides because he doesn't look like he's motoring that fast. And then he pulls away from all those um, kick coverage guys, and he ran a really good time on on Tuesday. So I have two guys that stood out. The other guy was Marcus Well. Now he he had some really good. Really good um, marks in a lot of areas. Not quite as good as Patrick and Tom, but uh, that's no crime either. So there's three guys that kind of stood out for me. Yeah, and what's so interesting, you know, Pro Day, the Combine, all these things, you know, I always try to take it with a little grain of salt, but when you get a guy like O'Connell, the names you mentioned, they backed it up on the field. It's not like they're just a Pro Day freak show where you all oh, these guys, look at the measurements. It's like they were – great on the field and when you have the numbers to back it up it only helps the draft stock so yeah no i could definitely see him being a late round pick that's a guy who could help a team make an impact early on special teams in the nfl and then work his way into a bigger role without a doubt in o'connell and the other names you mentioned so no a lot a lot of great stuff just kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit because i know it's always a fun time and grizz nation college football fancy and you're you know, favorite players from college or whatever it may be, get that opportunity. So, no, just um, wanted to touch on that. Anything else you want to throw out there, Fritz? If not, great stuff as always. Looking forward, <laughs> looking forward down the road to some more awesome Grizz football. I think it's going to be a fun year with some new pieces for sure. Yeah, you know, and like you said, September will be here before you know it. And uh, I, can, I guess I can look forward to the Grizzly, or I should say the Big Sky kickoff in Spokane in mid-July. And a couple weeks after that, they'll be in fall camp. So. In the meantime, we got a little track to cover, a little softball, a little baseball. So off we go. All right. Thanks, as always, to Fritz for joining the program. Thanks, as always, to everybody listening at home. It's been an awesome show. Quick reminder, today's episode was brought to you by Nomad. So everybody, shout out Nomad. Shout out Hagado Media Group Montana. It's been a heck of a show. Jam-packed. Going to get back into the normal format soon, our prep players of the week, all that fun stuff. But we've had lots to catch up on, lots of people to talk to. It's been really fun. Thank you all for tuning in and Excited for spring sports to really get underway. Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer. Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. 